It's amazing how many customs the ruling class invents to distinguish itself from the working class that it creates that trickle down to that working class. The poor and the workers are taught to admire their rulers and to jockey with each other for whatever meager scraps of money and social status they can get their hands on. So eventually they adopt customs that are handed down to them. They've been doing it for thousands of years. Look at clothing. Most clothing is unnecessary. Most items of clothing and fashion seem to have come from the rich, who used to wear things and adorn themselves to make themselves stand out as superior. Now, being naked can get you thrown in jail. And we spend hours choosing from among slightly different clothes because we think we're expressing ourselves as individuals. But clothing is a, uh, is a very relatively old status symbol compared to some of the other things that we do, and one of those things is growing a lawn. I grew up thinking of a lawn as the most normal thing in the world, but it's quite a recent invention and quite unnecessary. It comes from European aristocrats in the Middle Ages. I don't want to go too deep into the history, since I don't know it, but lawns come from these huge manor houses in Western Europe, which, unlike North America, is suited to growing lawns. European settlers to North America naturally brought their elitist European standards with them. They, mostly the wealthy at first, built golf courses and bowling greens. Then they built suburbs. The new settler middle class had the chance to live like the kings they apparently admired, so they built houses with grass moats. See, the aristocrats in Europe, they had lawns. Large swaths of land, meticulously trimmed to show they had the money to be able to do that. What we have today are houses with a small space of green around them that homeowners have to maintain by themselves. After World War II, white people felt they had to move to the suburbs and have a lawn, because only then can you be considered middle class and live out the American dream. So they needed lots of space. They didn't mind expanding their control over nature if it made them look richer than the Joneses. These people were descended from settlers who colonized whole continents by killing people and kicking the survivors off their land. They kept up their ancestors' legacy by attempting to turn the land into miniature European estates. People still want lawns, so we're still encroaching on nature and sacred ground, destroying a little more of it each time. You might know I'm not big on stats, but some of them tell a story. Lawns cover about 63,000 square miles, or 40,000 acres, of the United States today, about the size of Texas. They use about 200 gallons of water per person per day. Americans spend $60 billion a year on their lawns. They use up to 100 million pounds of fertilizers, 10 times the amount farmers use, which produce more than 1% of annual greenhouse gas emissions and pollute the water too. Lawn mowers and leaf blowers. You know that headache you get when you remember leaf blowers exist? Are estimated to use about a billion gallons of gas every year and emit 20 to 40 billion tons of CO2. 17 million gallons of gas are spilled on the lawn every year while refilling. What do you think that does for the ground? In some places you actually get fined if you don't go through all the trouble of regularly maintaining your lawn. Finally, 35,000 people every year are treated for mower-related injuries, 4,800 of whom are children. All these statistics are in the links in the description. When I walk through a suburban neighborhood, I wonder 
how many of these lawns it would take to house the city's entire homeless population. How many little houses could we build on each lawn? Or imagine instead of grass, we grew fruit and vegetables. Imagine whole neighborhoods full of food anyone could go gather whenever they wanted. But people with lawns don't want that stuff. They don't want healthy, thriving communities. They want to look good in their tiny castle with its tiny moat like a tiny aristocrat. Most people would tell you to get off their lawns when they don't even use them for anything. Well, what, what could you use it for? It's grass, occasionally with clover or dandelions, but some people even get rid of those things, so there's even less color. You can't eat it. And unless you're grazing sheep, no one will. In fact, maintaining a lawn over a long period makes it much harder to grow anything else in that place, because it destroys biodiversity. If there were crop failures now, you would need to grow your own food, right? But it might prove impossible. Whole neighborhoods are food deserts because the land is no longer suitable for growing anything other than grass. So why do we still have lawns? It's a status symbol, and that's it. It's also a huge waste of space, time, money, and oil.